everybody. I'm so glad to be back with you today. Uh, I've been sharing about the fruit of the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit. We want to have the fruit of the Spirit in our lives, and that's a good thing. So um, this is part four of the fruit of the Spirit. So I'm going to read you a passage, passage of Scripture from the NIV Bible um, that talks about the fruit of the Spirit. So I want you to listen closely, and I want you to think about every time uh, I say in the scripture, spirit, spirit. So it starts Galatians 5.13. It says, you, my brothers, were called to be free. And before that, it's talking about all the rules and regulations that they had uh, in the Old Testament, especially circumcision and, and feast days and what to eat, what not to eat. It says, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. Uh, verse 16. So I say, live by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of your sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sin uh, sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other so that you do not do what you want to. Verse 18, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. Boy, that's a lot of things, isn't it? And we wouldn't want to have those things going on in our life, and we wouldn't want to uh, be best buddies with someone who is indulging all, in all of this sinful behavior. It says, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. Now we come to the fruit of the Spirit, which is the opposite of what we just read, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such, such things there is no law. There's no law against being kind. There's no law against being gentle or patient or peaceful. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature and its passion, with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. So we saw in this passage of scripture, living by the Spirit, um, if you're led by the Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit, um, keeping in step with the Spirit. So when we do all those things, when we're guided and controlled and yielding to the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit will be in our lives. So as I told you earlier, we're going from the back end of the fruit of the Spirit to the first. Um, so we already talked about uh, self-control and gentleness, and now we're going to talk about faithfulness. Um, and we're going to end up with the greatest fruit of all, the fruit that lasts forever, the fruit that will, will covers all these other things, and that's love. So I read uh, what we're talking about today is faithfulness. The word faithfulness is translated faith in some Bible translations, but faithfulness in most. And so the question is, well, which one is it supposed to really be? Well, the actual word in, in like a, a Greek uh, dictionary or whatever would be faith. But uh, the New Testament was written in the Greek, and it was common for this Greek word, which is pistis, to be used to, descri to describe someone who is trustworthy, reliable, loyalty, or loyal, and uh, has fidelity. So that's where we're going to go. We're going to go with the common Greek usage of the word at that time meant a person who is faithful, trustworthy, reliable, loyal, and has fidelity. In the Zondervan NIV Bible commentary says Christians are to be characterized by faithfulness, a word that also means faith, but undoubtedly here means that which makes a person on, uh, one on whom others can rely trustworthiness or reliability. The word describes a faithful servant, 
including the servants of the gospel and of Christ. It describes the character of those who will die for their confession of Christ. It goes without saying that it also describes or is descriptive of the character of a Christian, the faithful witness, and of God the Father who always acts faithfully toward his people. So the Bible has a lot to say about being faithful. Faithfulness talks about God being faithful. Pastor Terry has his own definition for faithfulness. It's always doing what you're supposed to do, uh, what you're supposed to be doing, when you're supposed to be doing it with a good and right attitude. That's his definition of faithfulness, and I think that's great. You know, the Bible says that faithfulness is the rarest of all of the fruit of the Spirit. In Proverbs 20, verse 6, in the King, New King James Version, Proverbs 20, verse 6, it says, Most men will claim each his own goodness, but who can find a faithful man? So a faithful person is a rare person, and if you're faithful, you will stand out in the crowd. We're to be faithful to God, to his words. We're to be faithful to our families, our friends, our employer, our employees, uh, our church family, and our spiritual leaders. We're to be faithful. Uh, that same scripture, Proverbs 6, uh, 20, verse 6 in the NLT says, Many will say they are loyal friends, but who can find one who is truly reliable or dependable or trustworthy? They're hard to find. A good, loyal friend is hard to find. You know, uh, the fruit of faithfulness is very, very important if, if you want to be uh, entrusted with things by God, you have to be faithful. In 1 Corinthians 4 2, it says, Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found faithful. So God gives gifts and ministries and, and, and different uh, things to different people. Uh, the Bible talks about every, every single person in the body of Christ has a gift. And if we're to be given those gifts and, and use it properly, we're to be faithful. Faithful to the Lord and faithful with the gifts he gives us. The Bible also says we're supposed to be faithful in small things. And if we can't be faithful in small things, we won't be given bigger things to be faithful with. In Luke 16, verse 10, Luke 16, verse 10, it says, He who is faithful in what is least, or the smallest amount, is faithful and also in much. He who is unjust in what is least is unjust in much. Therefore, if you have not been faithful with the unrighteous mammon, which is just talking about the handling of money, um, who will commit you to trust your trust? Uh, who will commit to your trust the true riches of heaven? So if you're not uh, faithful in small things, you're not going to be getting the opportunity to be faithful in larger things. Verse 12, and if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? And that has a lot to do with, you know, uh, employees. You know, if we're not faithful taking care of our employer's business, you know, we might not have our own business to watch over. The parable of the talents in Matthew 25 is all about the rewards of faithfulness. And Jesus using over and over again the friend what the phrase well down ha, I can't talk today well done good and faithful servant so we want the Lord Jesus Christ to say to us well done thou good and faithful servant you know the Bible talks about the rewards of faithfulness being reliable being dependable being trustworthy being loyal in Proverbs 28 20 it says a faithful man will abound with blessings so if you're faithful, the Bible says you will abound with blessing. Psalm 31, 23, the Bible says the Lord preserves the faithful. We want to live long. We want to be protected and preserved. And a key to that is being faithful. Psalm 101, uh, verse 6 says, my eyes shall be on the faithful. The Lord's eyes are going to be on you if you're faithful. I want his eyes on me, that's for sure. Psalm uh, 101, verse uh, 6, oh, I just read that, so Proverbs 13, 17, says a faithful ambassador brings health, brings health. Don't you want to bring health to people? Well, be faithful. Be a faithful ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ. And at the end, end of times, we're also going to receive the crown of life if we're faithful to the Lord. This is in Revelation 2, 10. 
It says, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you in prison that you may be tested and you will have tribulation 10 days. Be faithful until death and I will give you the crown of life. So um, sometimes it's easy to be faithful and sometimes it's really, really hard. And if you're being tortured in prison, taken away from your family, uh, having your house taken away from you because of your witness to the Lord Jesus Christ, um, that is a real test of faithfulness to him. The best example that we have of faithfulness is our Heavenly Father. He is faithful to his creation. Psalm 86, 15 says, But you, O Lord, are a compassionate and gracious God, slow to anger, abounding in love and faithfulness. So the Bible says we're supposed to be imitators of God. We're supposed to, those attributes, those wonderful attributes that we have, we're to be like him in that. We're to be compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love, and we are also to mimic God's faithfulness. We're supposed to be faithful like he is faithful. In 2 Timothy 2, uh, 13 in the NLT Bible, it says, If we are unfaithful, he remains faithful, for he cannot deny who he is. So God cannot be unfaithful to you. He is faithful and we need to have that same kind of faithfulness to the people around us and to the word of God. So in conclusion, if we live by the spirit, are led by the spirit and keep in step with the spirit, we will have the fruit of faithfulness in our lives. God will be able to pour out more blessings to you and you will be a blessing to the people around you. You're own family, your workplace, and your, and your uh, church body, your church that you go to, you'll be a blessing to all of them. So I hope this has encouraged you to look at yourselves and see, you know, if you're faithful, if you're imitating or, or you know, exhibiting that fruit in your spirit, and it, you will be blessed if you do. So I hope you've enjoyed this. Next week, we'll do another fruit of the spirit, and we'll, uh, just be blessed by the word of God and just uh, reading and teaching and just speaking the word out of my mouth is such a blessing. So if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've never been born again, I just encourage you to, to ponder that today, that God loves you. He's faithful to you, even though you've rejected him. And he wants you to repent of your sins and put your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and he will make your life different. I guarantee it to you. Well, I hope this has blessed you, and I want you to have a good week, and check in on Sunday for Pastor Terry's next message. We'll see you later. God bless you. Bye-bye.